Hello, friends. My name is Maximus, and I'll be your dungeon master for the evening. I'd like to welcome you all to a very special bonus episode of Castles and Cantrips for some of your favorite streamers play Dungeons and Dragons live, usually on Friday nights, sometimes on Wednesday nights. I'm joined by our amazing cast tonight of Virtual Spectre and Moves Like Jagger from the GG and crew. And tonight is, of course, our Ron and Valken buddy adventure. I'm very excited for you all to play this because I had a lot of fun writing this, so it's going to be a good time. But this episode was made possible thanks to uh, viewers like you. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that, but I went there uh, for supporting us during our charity stream, which was two or a week and a half ago. Time is weird for me right now. Week and a half ago. So we've raised $2,000 to support the International Rescue Committee, who is actively helping displaced families from the invasion of Ukraine. So what was awesome is that we just blew away our original goal. Um, it's just, what, maybe 15 minutes in the stream. So uh, we scrambled for some stretch goals, as you do, which we met all those too. So y'all are fantastic. Thank you so much for watching live or watching the VODs later or for listening via podcast very much appreciate it and uh you can have this amazing uh buddy cop adventure for um, ron and valken so i hope you all are excited yeah i'm ready and i i can't believe we get to play D D twice in one week twice in one week what this are we thinking so good it's gonna be awesome. i have so much to write <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i'm excited no, you, I feel like the show just writes itself. You're just guiding it along. You're doing great work. Let me tell you, I would love it if this show wrote itself. <laughs> I would absolutely love it. <laughs> no, yeah, you put you put so much time in this, and, and we appreciate it. It's amazing. Um, but anyway, um, I think that without any further ado, let's just go ahead and kick tonight's episode of Catches and Cantrips. So, as a brief recollection of what happened last time, this being a bonus episode and all, you arrived in Last Chance, seeing the Vantis army currently encamped outside of the town, as they informed you of the current situation that they were involved in between them and the local guild, you could say, pulling the strings from the shadows. So, as you all are here in Last Chance, you had made your way to the uh, local tavern to have some of their swill here at the Fool's Dagger. Your rest of your party is currently off on their own sort of missions, you could say. Vin or Vince, who you know them as now, is currently left with one of the thugs that were perusing the bar there. As she gave you the, the wave that she was leaving to let you know. And Bryn is well, a little deep in her uh, cups at this moment after tasting some of their uh, illicit substances. So while she... Uh, probably calls it a night a little early to uh after causing a little ruckus around the tavern you find yourselves both here in the fool's dagger wondering what to do next but as you are all discussing and sort of taking in the sights of uh, the very shady crowd that this uh place seems to attract you hear a very just loud argument going on. It seems like it's from outside the establishment somewhere down the street. 
Uh, what, uh, Valkan, did you, did you hear that? It's such a loud noise. We should go look. Um, that's what you want to do. I don't mind just hanging out in the tavern, though. Oh, well. Bryn is going a little crazy. Might be a good idea to keep eye on her, but... Ron, Ron will I'm check it out. see what it is, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Ron, as you step outside of the tavern and can hear sort of this argument a little more clearly, you see far off down the street uh, two individuals, one wearing a cloak and hood, the other wearing sort of simple clothing. Um, from this distance away, it's impossible to tell really kind of what exactly they look like. But they, you see one of them talking down to a, another very short individual. Could be a child, could be one of the shorter um, folk that live in these parts. And you hear one of them almost apologizing, holding their hands up almost in a, a, a placating manner. And you can just hear just faintly, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll... Get- I'll get you whatever you need. It's just things are being hard right now. And as you hear another voice say, Oh, we'll get what we need, little one. And you see in the distance this figure, the hooded one beside them, just sock this person in the face, knocking them to the dirt. And they pick up this person and they begin dragging them to a carriage. Oh, uh, Rod's gonna rush over. Hey! You leave a small child alone. So as you yell, they look to you and see you coming out of the tavern. They stuff the small individual, as you've gotten closer, must be Welby, into this carriage. One stuffs him in the back, the other hops on and starts hitting the reins and starts riding away. What you can see there is the same cart that you gave Welby with horse tied to it as this other carriage is getting away what do you do uh I'll start running towards the cart and yell Valken they have taken Wobi we must save him uh Ron just grabs Valken and just runs <laughs> alright so as you Grab Falcon and run out. You see the, the carriage has a little bit of a head start on you. And uh, we're going to have a good old fashioned carriage chase. So what we're going to do here is we want to do something that we've done before. A little skill challenge. So if you remember the rules from last time, you can use any of your character's appropriate skills. You can use any of your character's abilities if you think that it will be um, relevant or any other proficiencies that you might have. However, each individual character cannot use one thing more than once. So if you both wanted to use persuasion or athletics, one of you could each, but you can't do it a second time. Got it. So this is going to be sort of difficult chase you will need eight successes to complete it and that's before you receive four failures sound good all right okay so this carriage is speeding away uh who is taking the reins on the cart and driving uh ron will this also counts as a land vehicle, if any of you are proficient in that. Uh, nope, I, don't, I guess not. I don't think, uh, I don't think I'm proficient in that either. You are. I am? Mm-hmm. On your tools section, vehicles mm. land. Oh, shit. From your background, you got that. Oh, uh, Falcon, you should take the reins. Uh, uh okay. Um, all right, uh, the audio is still cutting in and out for me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like getting half of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna continue to try and fix it, but uh, yeah, oh, I, 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 whatever I gotta do to get 
following this thing. All right, so in order to try and catch up to this carriage, you can give me any sort of check or proficiency or anything that you'd like to use. Just let me know what you would like, and then we'll see if it makes sense. Are we, is this gonna be like initiative order or are we just gonna just, just blood belt it out? I'm just gonna go, and there's only two of you, so I'll just go one after the other. Okay. Okay. What are we doing? I think you, you can, can choose use... a skill or proficiency to use to try oh, and catch okay. up to this other carriage. So you can use your land vehicle tool, right? Mm hmm. You could. Uh, sure. We'll go with that. Gotcha. So I'm going to roll me a d20, and this will be based on dex. And you can roll d20 plus your dex modifier, and then add your proficiency. D20 plus dex? Plus, plus proficiency. Oh. This is rough, you guys. <laughs> I'm, that's, I'm struggling to hear here. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is if you're having those audio issues... Let's uh let's just take a second chat to get this worked out and we'll be right back and then hopefully we won't have any other issues going on. So give us one second, we'll fix this and we'll come right back. So don't go anywhere. Okay. Uh all uh audio issues sorted. So sorry about that. Thanks for being patient. Um these things happen, kind of like last week when things just happened and we had to cancel. So anyway, when I was as I was saying, as Ron sees the speeding carriage riding away pulls Valken over to this wagon that used to be yours. A little horse and horse and cart here. Um, Valken, you step behind the reins and uh, start the chase. So, like I mentioned, we're doing a skill challenge okay. here. And with this skill challenge, we are going to, uh, you let me know which proficiency or character feature or um, tool proficiency that you would like to use or skill, and we'll see if it makes sense. But the first scenario is you're trying to catch up to this carriage who's just kidnapped your friend. So what would you like to do? Well, Which one would you like to I use? I like to get into D&D &D Beyond here. Nice. <laughs> 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 um, Ron is going to use his uh, Speak with Beast and Leaf to talk to the horse. Okay, what are you going to say to the horse? Uh, is this the same horse we gave him? Yeah. Okay. Hello, old friend horse. It is Ron. Your tiny friend has been kidnapped and we must rescue him. So you must ride swiftly. Okay. Uh, so give me a uh, persuasion roll. For this this won't count towards persuasion but it's what seems appropriate to me okay got 21 whoa we'll count that as a success seven to go <laughs> <laughs> yeah so as you kind of say these words to the horse you can sort of see the ears kind of turn back in understanding how you've previously spoken with other animals and you just hear a <laughs> and it starts to take off all right one success so as you are taking off, uh, Valken, as uh, the horse and cart that you have is trying to catch up to this carriage, um, you see that there is sort of a crowd of people trying to sort of in the streets here, and you're going to have to find a way to avoid them. What do you do? Uh, well, I still don't care. All my stuff is saved on Google Chrome. I don't have any of this stuff with Edge. That's okay. Um, I will uh, let me see this. So I pasted something in the chat so you can at least see it. Uh, I still have to. Oh, I this see. It's such a pain in me. I have to That's log okay. into so everything. Just tell me what, you, what skill you think you'd want, and then we can go from there. I can help you out. Um, I, what I used one thing already, right? The, Not yet. Oh, I haven't used that yet. Mm -mm. Oh, is that that? I forget what it's called. The card efficiency and land vehicles. Yeah, should I use that? Yeah, roll your d20, add uh, plus four and uh, or add plus eight total because dex and and uh, efficiency. efficiency bonus. Yeah, 
20 plus 8. Yeah. Uh, 10. A 10. Okay. That is going to be a failure. Uh huh. So, luckily, you were able to sort of avoid um, the crowd that's for, that's sort of crossing over the street, and you take your uh, cart up onto one of the curbs in front of another store, and your cart sort of hits onto the wooden planks kind of out in the front of it, and you hit a, uh, a couple of columns holding the storefront up, and as you're passing through, you see the storefront crash down behind you. E. Sorry. Ron, you've noticed that while you did sort of take out a whole storefront, you are gaining uh, on the carriage with this horse being extra motivated currently, uh, as well as you having a much lighter load for the horse to sort of uh, gallop with. Um, but one thing that um, you notice now is that the um, the cart has taken a turn somewhere and you've currently lost sight of him. Ah. Uh. Okay, I will. I will use a perception. That works. Maybe find some dust marks or tracks or something like that. Uh, that would be a 15. That is a success. So as you're looking and trying to see where they may have taken and which direction they've gone, as you are nearing um, a sort of a, an easy turn in the road here. You see the cart sort of just hauling ass down the road. So you direct Valken over to that direction and are able to kind of get back on the trail here to follow them. Alrighty. Oof. Over to you, Valken. As you're sort of catching up, um, you can see that one of the um, people in the back of the carriage. You see the window sort of come open and they crawl out the side of it. And you see a familiar device that you've seen before when you had uh, been on the mountaintops and had infiltrated that little Ram Crown uh, Citadel at the top of the mountains. You see them lean out the window with a long rifle pointed in your direction mm. and they take a shot oh. at you. What would you like to do? I will use... Um... I'll use the rifle. Yes. I use wow. athletic, Go my athletics to try and like move my body to dodge the shot. Okay. Yep. So you can use your athletics if you'd like. Um, you could also catch it if you wanted to. Oh, right. I could do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, why don't we do out. that instead? <laughs> or, um, forget how that works. Let's see. see. Uh, I'll help you since uh, you can't find your character sheet at the moment. I got um, it. Um, I We're having issues. So, now. deflect missiles. What they're going to have to do is they're going to hit you with a ranged attack, which they do. And for a musket, it's going to do quite a bit of damage here. Oh, actually, a lot. Um, so, they're going to basically shoot for 12. What you have to do is roll a d10 and uh, add a whole bunch of stuff, which I think is plus 13. So, they can't even hit you. Yeah. Yeah, so 5 plus 13. Got you. What does it look like whenever you just catch a bullet out of the air with um, your uh, deflect missiles? So having seen this thing once before, um, I just am seeing the flash of the thing. I remember that it, this thing's going to throw something really fast at me. And I just focus on trying to spot it and I just catch it in time and I'll just swat it away. Just... Gotcha. So as the bullet nears you, you just sort of bat it to the side as you've got the reins to this horse. That has another success. You are three and one currently doing pretty well. Oh. And you see that this, this person that's leaned out was the one wearing a hood, but as they are um, traveling the opposite direction, you see that the... Uh, you can almost make out maybe some ears coming out of the hood a little bit. Not certain since the hood is, is currently staying on since the wind's helping it stay there. Mm. 
All okay. right. Ron, as you are sort of going down um, the street, you see um, Valken swat something out of the air after a large just cacophony of explosion comes from the cart ahead of you, um, which has frightened a small uh, collection of pigs as they break out oh. of someone's uh, pin nearby and they are about to converge onto your carriage. Ooh, wait, the pigs are all loose. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to use insight to telegraph the pig's trajectory to yell, talk to Valkan to avoid him. All right. Go for it. Okay. That's um, it's a nat one, but it's a six. Failure. Uh. So you think that you've judged their trajectory, um, but being frightened and scared of just this loud sound, they they just quickly change direction and sort of plow uh, into this carriage in between where the horse and sort of the the wagon sorry connects together so they you feel um for a moment the wagons rocked onto um basically one wheel since the two-wheeled carriage that you'll have i'm pretty <laughs> sure um so valken you are currently up on uh on one wheel and trying to stabilize <laughs> this uh this cart what do you do uh, um shit uh, this isn't good. I'm going to... Um, man. Don't know what the heck works here. Make a case for it and uh, we'll see if it works. That's the whole idea. So, I, I, I guess I missed that part. Is this like a small like two-wheeled car that, yeah, that we're driving? Yeah, it's what you started with originally. I so you basically... Say, I think okay. it was four wheels, to be, to be honest. It's been... 50 episodes ago or so so it's a, you got a small cart basically the one that you started in the very beginning that you gave to welby with a horse pulling it so it's not um, like a large wagon but we're but on one wheel yeah so two wheels if it's four wheel which i think it okay is. okay uh so um i used my thing last time okay i'm gonna use i'm gonna use my athletic this time okay use it last time um and I'm Falcon's going to leap out of the out of the seat he's currently sitting in, grab onto the side of, of the cart that's um, kind of up in the air, mm -hmm. and it's just gonna literally try to shift his weight, hanging onto the side of it down to, to see if he can shift his weight down and pull the, the cart. Perfect. Yeah, back make an athletics check. Wheels. That doesn't work. Uh, oh no. That's a natural one. <laughs> oh no. No. <laughs> okay. I fell so. off the card. <laughs> no, no, no. Not necessarily. Um, so you, you make this motion and try to kind of shift your weight. Uh, but the wagon's teetering and it takes you longer. You thought it would be a one and done and you'd be able to jump back on. But you're trying to kind of get control of the wagon and sort of um, pull on the reins for the horse to help you in that direction. So you finally get the wagon under control um, as you land on this, on the wagon, um, the carriage is starting to um, pull away. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, Ron, as you were kind of, you feel the wagons reset and you're going down this little path between in this town. Um, You've noticed that there's a carriage that is pulled out in front of you and, and sort of almost catching up to go alongside uh, another carriage. So there's a little bit of a space in between them. Um, what do you do? Uh, is, does this carriage in front of us seem like they're trying to separate us? On no, purpose? it's just really bad timing. Okay. Um... And we can we can use spells and abilities. Yeah, anything you want to use on your character sheet, I'll allow it as long as okay. it makes sense. Um, I want to cast plant growth 
to the carriage we're chasing to maybe hopefully maybe with some vines and roots kind of tangle it okay. down. All right. Let's take a look at plant growth. Uh, yeah, a point in range in all normal plants at a hundred foot radius centered on that point become thick and overgrown. Got you. Yeah. So as you sort of see what's happening and, and to avoid the cart getting away even further, um, since you're gonna have to take some time to navigate, um, this little conundrum you have yourselves in the, you cast the spell and it catches hold of the carriage and just like doesn't quite screech to a halt, but definitely slows it down. So it's not getting away from you and you're able to catch up to it. So that is definitely a success. Ooh. Which currently you are four successes, three failures. So we can't fail anymore. Falcon, as the cart or the carriage ahead of you is slowed from Ron's spell and you sort of navigate and squeeze through between these other these other carts and carriages um, as you're squeezing through and just as though when you're going to catch up to this cart um, a small cart being pulled by a uh, short elderly fellow um, carrying cabbage starts to pull in front of you What do you uh, do? It's like about to cut us off. Yeah, this this little cabbage cart is in your path. Um. Tuffy. Uh. I have no idea. Any skill um, that you think I'm, might even be related, you can go for it. I don't know if this is gonna work, but um, I'm gonna like frantically shout and try to get that that car driver's attention to like stop or or like move over to get out of our way. Like just shout as loud as I can at him. I think that'd be I don't know maybe persuasion. I, yeah, I think persuasion would work. Okay. Go for it. There we go. I'm rolling not great tonight. Better. Um, I got 18 on the dice, so... Yeah, it's 18 plus 4 if it's persuasion. Yeah, you definitely succeed there. So is this small gentleman is sort of taking his cart out in the middle of the road and you're, you're just yelling for him to get out of the way. He looks up and just sort of backs up as you just zoom pi zoom past like right in front of him, avoiding the, the collision. So that is five success successes almost there. Oh. Okay. So the cart or the carriage in front of you makes another tight turn. Um, or makes a tight turn, much tighter than the last one, to try and avoid you and, and their cart almost toppling over but making it. Um, as you go to make the tight turn, you kind of feel the wagon come up on its wheels again. Um, what do you do, Ron? Uh, Ron is going to use his ballroom dancing skill that we <laughs> learned to balance out the cart from top over. Right. Go for it. <laughs> You're going to spin your way to the other side yeah. elegantly. Play! Uh, 16. 16 does it. That is a success. Two more to go. So you're able to put the, the cart back on its wheels as you make the tight turn. Um, definitely catching up. To the rest of them. So, as you are nearing the other cart and catching up uh, to them, you can see sort of the, the other carriage in reach as the, um, 
sort of person in the carriage sort of trying to hold Welby down. You can kind of get a good look at them and they almost look um, feline in their features. And then the driver appears to be a human man. So as you are up alongside uh, this cart trying to catch up to him, what do you do, Valken? It was sorry. It was doing the thing again. Mm -hmm. You are up alongside the uh, the carriage at this point. Okay. Um, carriage we're chasing. Right? Yes. Yes. Uh, is so. Can I, do I have a clear shot at like what, where the driver is then? Yeah, you could. Of that cart. Mm hmm. Um. All right, so. What I want to do is, um, do what Valken does a lot, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna uh, quickly uh, shove the reins into Ron's hand, and I'm gonna go and leap across the cart onto theirs and try to wrestle the reins away from the other driver. Uh, and I think in order to to do this. I feel like maybe uh, using my acrobatic talents will make this possible. Yeah, I think that works for sure. Okay. Roll me acrobatics. Get this word. Not bad. Uh, 10 plus acro acrobatics is plus 8, so 10 plus 8. That is a success. So as you shove the reins uh, into Ron's hands and leap over onto their carriage, um, to try and wrestle the reins away from the driver and you have a bit of a scuffle. Hmm. Let's see. All right, Ron. This is it. Success or failure. Here. Uh, so, as you see, um, Val can jump onto the carriage. Um, you see that the, the road starts to narrow where you're at. And there's only going to be room eventually for one uh, of uh -huh. these carts or carriages. Uh -huh. So you've got the reins, you've got the, the cart. What are you going to do to keep from crashing? Uh, in this carriage, do I? is there a window and can I see inside it? You can. Yep. You see the, uh, the feline sort of... Um, person wrestling around and like holding Welby down with one arm and then trying to get a shot off at you all which is difficult since you're alongside the other side now okay i i tell the horse to be safe and is there there's a is it, is it like a, a cliff you said or no the just, roads are narrowing the roads are narrowing there's only room for one yeah I, i'll tell those like you can give up the chase now and ron is gonna Misty step inside the carriage. Very nice. That will be your eighth and final success. Oof. So you um, let the cart uh, go as you misty step. The cart slows and sort of veers off, not being directed anymore. You misty step inside of this carriage with a tabaxi a halfling and Ron. <laughs> Not a lot of room <laughs> here <laughs> in this little <laughs> carriage, but um, and then Valken, you have wrestled the reins away uh, from the driver of this cart. Um, and they're sort of scared shitless here. Um, and the driver sort of puts his hands up and he's like, we, uh, we don't want any trouble. And he just tries to run off the cart as you're slowing it down off the carriage. Falcon, you have succeeded. You have saved your friend, but now there are other complications. Okay. Uh, is the cart? We fully stopped the cart, though, that they were on. Not ish. He jumped off while it was moving. Right. Uh, so my intention is to to bring that cart to heal. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and I don't know, worrying about the driver of is, is not my main priority at the moment. <laughs> Just getting it stopped. Gotcha. Um, so. And you got a good look at this guy too, as he sort of faced you. He's got long black stringy hair, a little curly mustache at the ends, uh, looks relatively young, um, and sort of big brown eyes as he stared up at you in, in shock. Uh, as he took off. So Ron, you are in this uh, carriage with the uh, Tabaxi, Welby, and you. What are you going to do? Uh, Ron is going to <laughs> kind of roar, I guess. Okay. And it's Tabaxi. He's like, what are you doing with my friend? Make an intimidation check. Okay. Nice. Ron is handsome i guess <laughs> uh 18. 18 and she looks up to you and just sees you appear in this carriage and she just lets go of welby lets go of the musket in the other hand and just says we're not trying to, to do to, to do anything and she just tries to leave the carriage uh try to stop her sure yeah you could easily just kind of grab her by her cloak and keep her from leaving as she's just sort of just scrambling, trying to get away from you, but uh, you've got a pretty good grip. And just as that happens, the cart comes to a stop. And you are in the streets close to the edge of town of uh, Last Chance. Um, one of the um, kidnappers has sort of disappeared into the night as uh, Valcom was trying to make sure you all didn't crash. Um, but you do have one currently in your uh, possession. Whew. Ah. And uh, I had not plan on chasing people tonight. Yeah. Everything okay, Vulcan? Yeah. I'm alive, I think. Barely. Uh, Will be are you fighting what what is happening? Why is this happening to you? Yeah, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of the cot. I'm gonna get out of the cot. Oh, I'm gonna get out of the cot And he just opens the door and just sort of just almost just collapses uh, onto his knees Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, that's so scary How did you even know that was happening? How did you? Oh. And he just sort of like his face starts to sting and you see it sort of kind of um bruising from when he got hit ow what oh. why'd you hit me so hard i'm just ron's gonna shake to back like, yeah why why did you hurt why'd you hurt him done your business but it is ron's business now and you best tell ron what happened well he kind of comes to he goes we're trying to they're trying to shake me down from from for gold and whatever I had. And I don't know why. He said it's for protection. Does this happen often? N not until recently, the past um, week or so. Ron is gonna turn it to Baxi. So you will speak the truth. Uh, tell Ron why you're doing this to Wilby. Just doing what I'm told to do. Getting our protection gold to the collective. But you have not done this before. Why are you doing this now? Well, of course we do it before, but now we're just doing it more often and to more people. Why is this? Because it's what they told us to do. I don't ask questions. That's what gets you killed. Messing with Ron's friend is also what can get you killed. All I know is that we had to collect all the gold, outstanding gold, and anything else we could get our hands on for something, something big. I don't know what it is. I'm just, just doing what I was told. And, well, doing what he told me, and she just points off into the, to the night. What is your name? Minmari. And 
the one who ran off is uh what how you say your your boss superior yes he looks quite young for uh, superior maybe he's just good at his job so what if, if one cannot pay you just kidnap them this is how it works and if they don't they don't pay then we gotta you know, rough them up a little bit Make him want to pay or find gold where they refuse to give it. Uh, so you were just going to beat this small one up in your carriage and then kick out and hope you get money? Well, yeah. That seems very excessive. Effective. You hear, um, you see sort of a crowd forming around and you, and you, um, see someone kind of bust through. All right, all right, break it up, break it up. And you see a stout dwarf sort of look up at you. Who's got a, a bald headed, uh, some gray sort of friendly mutton chops that kind of go up into a mustache. He goes, all right, a lot of you down here. Okay, Ron will exit the carriage while still holding the tabaxi. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how Arnold Schwarzenegger did in Terminator where he's like holding the kid up. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. And he sort of looks you all up and down. All right, I don't suppose any one of you can tell me what happened here, can we? Oh, yes, clearly. Uh, this one tried to threaten uh, my, Ron's friend will be here for protection money, whatever that is. And... Will be had not have money, so this one, or maybe other one who ran off that way, uh, assaulted, will be for not having money. Then kidnap into carriage. We ca- we chase to protect our friend. And he looks to you, Falcon. Is that right? Yeah. Unfortunately, it interrupted my drink at the bar. Oh, we can't have that, can we? Oh, you can actually. All right, I'm going to have each of you follow me down to the guardhouse to give a statement. That includes you, little one. And he sort of points it well, but he's just trying to hide behind you, Ron. Just to kind of avoid the whole situation. All How right, long let's is this going to take? It's going to take as long as it takes. All right. Okay, okay. I just got to do what I got to do. And Ron gently taps will be said and I lay our hands him for the the punch damage all right he feels better um I'll take this one and grab sort of the the tabaxi mimari um and put some manacles on her all right just a short walk this way he damn near crashed in front of the uh guardhouse earlier oh it's convenient we are close and he sort of leads you all on to the guardhouse and in the back he uh sort of shoves uh, mimari into a cell um, and says, wait here, and starts talking to Welby in another room, sort of getting his side of the story. Um, and says, all right, you can go. Now over to you two. Come on in. This won't take long. Okay. And you all sit down in sort of a small sort of private room. Um, and you see him sort of sit down and you see sort of a, a makeshift sort of like a badge uh, on his armor. Uh, and he looks to you all. First off, you can call me Captain Krask. What are your names? They call this one Ron. Ron? And you? Brad. Bryn? Brad. Brad. As in right. Brad. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Funny name. All right, well. Um, not very nice. Uh, well, I apologize, Mr. Pitt. So, Brad and uh, Ron, pleased to meet your acquaintance. Likewise. Now just what the fuck are you doing here? Did you see all the property damage outside? You ran into one of the shops and you took it down. You almost ran into the cabbage cart. Do you have any idea how much property damage you've done with this little chase of yours? Um, what? (laughs) I'm gonna blow a gasket. Clearly, the 
collective people who are kidnapping our friend because they cannot pay money for protection cause all the damage. We had no part in it other than trying to rescue our friend. Well, just who do you think you are playing city guard here? There's only one city guard here, and that's Captain Grask. Oh, well, we are adventurers from the Order of Iberus. Of course you are. What do you have to say for yourself, Brad? <laughs> um. <clears throat> um. Can you prove that we did that? You're nothing but a just a sorry whole group of adventurers. I'm tired of this shite coming through here and messing things up. You're all, all right. the same. I don't really care about this thing, but uh, and I'm going to show him the leaf thing that we got the pin. I'm like, I don't really care about this, but maybe you do. He sort of looks at it. Are you trying to bribe me? Oh, no, he does not know what it is. Uh, you don't know what it is. All right, fine. Uh, just Captain, a bunch of kindless, just dim witted wells is what you are. If, if, oh, uh, yeah. Ron, you're getting me hurtful now, <laughs> Captain, you, you seem, uh, angry but hungry, same time. So maybe you like honey bread. Ron just presents a, a honey, a sweet bread to him. He just sort of grabs it. I do like honey bread and just eats it angrily and you hear sort of um min Mari try to, to speak up yourself, goes, i'm not a... even started with you yet <laughs> so what just makes you think you can you can play adventurer or city guard or whatever the fuck you're doing here well we like ron said our friend Welby was kidnapped we could not just simply go to guard and say hey our friend is kidnapped we had to act now or we might have never seen our, our friend again he just sort of sits down and just like you're gonna make me dizzy you're gonna make me go into a fit again and i'm not gonna like it would you like ron to play soothing music for you and ron like pulls out his flute he just slaps your hands no oh okay. no music like maybe later and he just sort of looks and goes all right. All right. All right. So you mentioned your friend was kidnapped, and you mentioned that your your the collective or something. Expand on that a little bit, just to help me understand what's going on here. Uh, as as we know, understand that the uh, this town is has uh what do you say uh. Un underbelly underground not underbelly you know not because you know his belly's like this it runs like squeeze his belly uh dark side of town organization called collective maybe uh we have we heard rumors that uh, this collective r actually runs this town but uh behind the scenes well the you're shadows. quite informed are you he just sort of like just rubs his forehead I'm gonna have Lord Holt breathing down my neck even more. I just want to think, keep things calm and quiet. Oh, so you know about this collective? She sort of looks out the door and, and making sure that uh, Minmari just sort of slides the door closed. All right, listen, I appreciate what you're trying to do. But my hands are tied. You see, there's a reason that there's only one guard in town, and it's old Captain Krusk. Wait, your hands are free. What do you mean? No, my hands are tied. I can't oh. do anything about the collective. Ron, Ron sees your hands, they're clearly free. Looks to, to Brad. <laughs> What's wrong <laughs> with him? Uh, he's a... Uh... A phone? He's just a... Uh... No, 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 no. Uh, just a general giant, not uh, familiar with many turns of phrases that uh, city folk are used to. Uh, by the way, uh, we're getting off with a, a warning, right? Uh, look, I know who you've got in the cell over there, Min Marie. And she's always running around with Boren. So that's probably was involved as well. 
I'm assuming um, the one that ran off. Long dark hair, mustache. Yeah, really shitty mustache. Yeah, kind of smelled. Yeah. He definitely took off. So I'm in a bit of a pickle. I'd love nothing more than to try and bring the collective to justice, but as you all know, or in the uh, or in the know, however you are, you kind of run things in the background. They started forcing me to take money when I didn't want it, and if they said if I didn't take the money, they'd find someone else to do the job, someone that they could depend on. So I figured, well, if they install someone that they trust, then the whole town's gonna go to shit. So. Here I am. So you unwillingly take money, but decide to take money anyways for greater good of town? Right, it's kind of messed up, isn't it? Yes. So uh, here's the deal. Yes. I can't do anything to them. But if you're here to try and help old Captain Krusk out, maybe I could um, give you some information. There's something, there's something big happening. They've started shaking down business owners, people that they haven't even racketeered money out of before. Oops. So if you, um, well, look into this for me, yeah. uh -huh. maybe yes. you can find a friend in old Captain Krusk and sort of forget this whole thing ever happened. So we are to look for your friend? No, not my friend. None of my friends. So. I'm just saying that if, well... I mean, Mari is pretty low on the ladder over there. If you could find her partner, maybe you could look into what's really going on here. Um, are you aware of missing soldiers who came in to parlay with town? No, I'm not privy to any of that. Maybe that's related to something that's, that's big that's happening, but I can't speak to that one. Hmm. So we look for our other guy. What's his name? Bro, Broly? Oh, his name is uh, Boren. Boren. Yes, B O R I N. Last name is Cleves. Boren Cleves. He uh, stays in a small shack on the edge of Westmill. They're usually wrapped up in some sort of thing like we have here. Okay, so we find this boring man, and uh, we bring him back. Bring him back here or find out what's going on. Okay. Because if you bring him here, I put him in a cell for a night and then have to let him out or else I get the heat down on me again. Hmm. Okay. See what I'm trying to tell you? Hands are tied? Hands uh, are tied. It's the heat's on you. Right is if you need to cool off you could go outside just roll with it it's fine how do you communicate with this person <laughs> uh, it's quite easy just don't use any confusing turns of phrase that's all right well um good luck I will um of course deny any information that I gave you and if well, they come questioning me, so hope you can figure out what's going on and either, well, hopefully do something about it. Okay. We, okay. we were here to help friend. Right. And I'll keep that one as long as I can. So she can't go squealing off to the uh, rest of the collective. Okay, good. So we have little time. Right. Should right then. You make sure you the door. keep yourself well fed, by the way. Because you're not you when you're hungry. I mean, the problem is, is that I turn into a little bit of a, well, whatever. It's hard to, to make sure that you eat when you're so busy all the time. 
Ah, uh, you gotta set aside time. All right. Do what All I right, do. Will. Find an opportunity throughout the day to take a nap and then wake up and eat. You don't have a lot of responsibilities, do you? Oh, I work for myself. All right. Well, and you sort of backs out of the room. And don't ever let me catch you in this town again, or you're going to get it. We'll throw you in the 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 jail and, and throw away the key forever. Oh yes, uh, mighty captain. We will never do bad things again. All right now, get out of here before I change my mind. Yes, because we are criminals. Go on. That Did that work? Okay, let's get go. Out. Let's go, Ron. Come on. Do you, you do you think they bought it? I think he did just fine. <laughs> and uh, you see him turn around and sort of address the uh, let's back see in the jail. And he, uh, you are off onto the streets. Um, and uh, he directed you towards West Mill, where currently where you're at is sort of the edge of uh, Copper Arch, the main part of town. West Mill is just a surprise to the west, where all the uh, lumber and timber gets processed. Just uh. Sort of the edge of town there. And he gave you some proper directions on how to get to where you're going. Oh, uh, Valken. Uh -huh. Should we pretend to be bandits or whatever, you know, to to blend in? Ron can be brawn. Uh, you know, how many... You don't exactly know how bandits operate. Uh, you just take people money, right? Kind of, kind of. You can be Braun. I'll yes. call you Braun. Yes. And you can call me Brad. Okay, Braun. We'll be call Valken Brad. Brad Pitt and Braun. Yes. Okay. Uh, we can be. A new criminal duo. Yes, just into we... town, looking for money. work, money, oh, and work. Yes, yeah. work. We should have name, like uh, two bandits who steal gold. Two bandits who steal gold. Ah, uh, I might be a little on the nose. Uh. What about the the dirty duo? I'm just like smelling. You smell. I do too. We literally oh. came from a weeks long journey from the north and have not showered yet. Okay, dirty bandit is uh, very accurate then. Dirty, dirty duo. Dirty duo. Do? Duo? duo means two. Okay. okay. Dirty duo. Brawn and bread. Yes. Yes. Uh. Where did he say to go? I to to West Mill. In some you have shack. Any idea where that's at? He gave you directions. Okay. Then we look for boring cleaves. He's gonna recognize us though. We'll just say we were trying to cut in on his business. Uh. Uh. Ron can change appearance like Vin, but only one time. Maybe we want him to recognize us. It only uh, one hour though, not a long time. So you okay? You maybe Brad will talk. Okay, I don't know. Ron not good at lying. <laughs> I can try to lie. Oh, maybe Braun is good at lying. Hmm. Maybe. Okay. Let's do it. We'll feel it out as we go. Okay. So you make your way across town, leaving Copper Arch and then getting into uh, West Mill, sort of where there's a lot of timber processing and just sort of small uh, places of work. And then you find in that area sort of uh, where some small shacks and sort of small abodes are. And you uh, see the one that was uh, that you were directed towards uh, by the captain. Um, looks a little worse for wear, like it's not really been kept up very well. Um, and you can see sort of a lantern light glowing from the inside and you can hear a singular voice um, inside, almost talking to themselves.
Everyone's gonna okay. knock. You hear when you start knocking, do, 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 do. stops talking to himself. And you hear silence. Hello. Who is it? Braun. Who the fuck's Braun? We are uh, Braun and looking for work. I ain't got any work. Go away. Braun just looks at Valkan. Um, <laughs> he says no work. Listen. We were led to believe that men of ambition of sorts could find an easy time getting a certain kind of work here and we were directed to you specifically and you hear sort of a a pause and you hear stomping and he opens he's like swings and all who the fuck do you think oh shit and just sees ron and falcon <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy with the Oh what? yeah, you see the, the long black stringy hair, the curly mustache, sort of young human fellow, and he goes, "Oh shit!" and tries to close the door in your face. Uh, nope, we grab the door. Easy enough. And then I also just... grab him by the collar and shove him back into his place. Oh, hey, what? Oh, oh. And you just kind of shove him back. Close the um, door behind us. Okay, Ron will lock it. Yeah, close the door, and you uh, lock the latch behind you. What the, thing you, what the hell you think you're doing in here? You just can't barge into my house like this. Relax, okay? I think we got off on the wrong foot earlier. Now, we know who you are, who you work for, and we want in. Right, fat chance just spits at you. Oh, very, so uh, hit me. rude. With the spit? Yeah. <laughs> Roll for spit. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> Roll for spit. <laughs> actually, actually, this is considered a ranged attack, right? Sure. <laughs> no. Yeah, actually, you know what? Whatever. I I'll let it happen. I was going to catch it and throw it back, but that's equally nasty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm really, uh... Uh, you know, that probably wasn't the smartest thing to do. Maybe it wasn't the smartest thing coming here. Maybe I got five or ten friends waiting for you to barge in any moment now. I don't think so. Sort of looks at the door. Inside. Well, I'd make I, it quick inside, if I were you. See if he's actually being... I don't think he has any friends, but just <laughs> to Aww. see. <laughs> Poor Boren. Yeah, just give me an insight roll. Uh huh. Ron just tries to look menacing, of remembering back when the Bandit King was around it's and high. what, what they did. So he's just kind of Ron's just crossing his arm and just trying to mean mug it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you got a twenty-three. Uh, this dude's making this shit up on the spot. I figured as much. Like he's just pulling out of thin air and like looking around. One thing that you do see, though, is that even though this place is kind of just a mess, um, you see that there's, a, you know, a table with a couple of daggers and things on it, but there's also a large crate in the back corner that's been pried open and some sort of packing, um, like, straw and materials on the floor. Um, and you can see in, and kind of at the top are a couple firearms. Okay. I'm willing to let what you just did go hmm? without resorting to violence if you can help us out. Oh, that's mighty kind of you. What do you want? What I said. We know who you work for. We want in. You just don't get in the collective. We are the dirty duo. You do know, not know who you speak of. You're right there. I have no idea what the hell that is. Yeah. Listen, we don't have a lot of time, okay? We need to know how we can get in and meet the people that you know. 
Why would you want to do that? Oh, we like money. All right. Yeah. Cut the shit. What do you really want? What's this all about? You're not some dirty bandits, dirty whatevers. This is a shakedown. You want killed. something. What do you want? Oh, okay. Braun will show you. And Ron walks up and just shoves his face at Ron's armpit. <laughs> we are very dirty. Oh, God. <laughs> just... Do you not know how this, this is a negotiation? You don't tell me what you want. What do you want to know? What uh, Brad said. I can't get you in the collective. Just waltz you in there. That's not going to happen. So then tell us who can. If I waltz in there and say that these are my new friends and they came to join, they won't just kill me. They'll kill all of us. Well, how, how did you get in collective? They came to me. Hmm. They were really? recruiting. See? They recruited you. Yeah. What deeds have you done to gain interest? Well, I mean, I stole some shit. Uh, roughed up oh. some shop owners. Um... General Skullduggery and shit like that. No. And that's their criteria? What's that? So that's all the criteria is? Gotta make a name for yourself, but you're not gonna do that in one night. Yeah, well. Mm. So we, we have to do something big. I recall we chased you down in a car, destroyed half the town, and took your quarry. I feel like we've done enough to earn an introduction at least. All right, listen, here's the deal. All right, if I have to go report in and the longer that we're here, the more they're going to be waiting up for me. If you think that I can just introduce you to them, fine, whatever. It's our fucking funeral. Oh, we can be very persuasive. What do you think, Braun? Hmm, this, this is what can go wrong, huh? He keeps like looking around the room and like looking at just the, the crate and looking at you all. Um, what's in this crate? Braun walks, Braun walks over. So you notice, um, as you're walking over to this crate on the side, um, is sort of painted on is the emblem of Ram Crown on this crate. Oh. While Ron's doing that, I'm just gonna keep my arm around the guy's shoulder, knowing that he's looking antsy. Don't want him to go reaching for weapons. Mm -hmm. There's plenty around, so. <laughs> I'm not gonna do nothing. I'm not doing nothing. Yeah, it's... your eyes are getting kind of twitchy on me here. How it's... does one Boom come sticks, across. Firearms, guns! And how does one come across a crit? Uh, with emblem of Ram Crown on it in this uh, lovely home. Well, I mean, I did what I was supposed to. They gave me the crate and said, "Hey, try these things out, see if they're good, report back, and let us know." Was he he wasn't the one that shot at me before, right? The other one was. Okay. You you are saying Ram Crown give you this or Collective give you crate? No, not. A collective, my superior said, try these out, see how they work. Oh, so your superior can give us introduction. You put in good forward with us, we scratch your back, you know, you scratch our back, everybody, uh, everyone good. And what exactly are you doing to scratch my back in this scenario? Mm, let you live. It's a pretty shitty deal. You are overly trusting, you let some strangers into your house. Okay, Fine. maybe uh, you get, uh, you want to cut, we give you cut. We just need introduction. Out of what? Our earnings. What earnings? Well, we're here for jobs. There is, there ain't no jobs happening right now. There's one job that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. So it's how everyone gets paid with one job. That's how we've been pulling all the money in to pay for it. I'm just going to try to persuade him. 
He's like, whoa, we have three brains better than one. We could work, uh, we could work out a uh, deal profitable for everybody, especially us three. Sure, go for it. Nat 20, baby. Woo. Hmm. Uh, persuasion is plus so 27. Fuck me. So he just <laughs> says, all right, you seem more reasonable than you did earlier, but here's the thing. Like, we're not getting work. We're... I had to try these firearms out and report back. We had to go shaking down everyone in the whole damn town that's not the collective to get gold to bring back to the collective. Something's going on, and I don't exactly know what it is, but I'm sure it involves all the money that we're pulling in and something to do with these guns. That's all they've been doing for about a week or so. I have an idea of what it could involve, but not exactly sure. We all know so, there's an army outside your town, right? I mean, it's hard to miss, right? Right. So, an influx of Ram Crown gun. Collective not appreciative of the army outside. I can put two and two together. All right, well, I don't ask questions. So, if you want your introduction, God, it's fine. We can do that. All right, but once we're in there, if shit goes down, you're on your own. Just picture this. The dirty duo now becomes three. Triple trouble. Are those, is that seriously what you're going to go with? Uh, that name, that, those names? Uh, Am I laughing? We could be uh, right, three Bs. Brawn. Born bread, deadly, deadly bees. Yes, not not uh, like flying bee with honey, but uh, you know, because we we all have three bees in first name. All right, um, if you don't mind unhanding me for a moment, please. Keep your hands where we can see them. All right. He sort of like just brushes himself off and like straightens himself up. They're gonna expect me to have at least one of those on me and one of those. And he points to the dagger and a pistol. Okay. Yeah. Then maybe we all should have one. Ugh. All right. Fine. Whatever you say. On. He points over to the crate and he he sort of just puts uh, one of the pistols and fixes it to his belt and takes a dagger and sort of puts it into a, a sheath that he has. Okay. But uh, your pistol going to be empty. So you mean if, if when shit goes down, they try to kill us, that I just have to run and hide? Sure, why not? That's fine. I'll be fine. Oh, that's what you did last time. No. That's true. All right. Here's the deal. I'm going to go see someone by the name of Valshun. All right. Mm -hmm. Valshun doesn't like any sort of shenanigans or bullshit. But he plays cards tonight at the stiletto. Do you know about the stiletto? This is a tavern. Braun is assuming. Kind of. Are you familiar with the uh, lonely dagger? Or sorry, uh, the fool's dagger? Fool, yes, fool's dagger. Mm. It's underneath the fool's dagger. Perfect. Ah. You ever wonder why it's all full of the collective all the time. Oh. Ah. Okay, so uh main main entertainment hideout. Alright. Valshun is uh your superior? Yep. Okay, well let's go. All right, ready to go. So he sort of, you know, straightens himself up and heads out of the shack and walking back in the direction that you came back to the fool's dagger to go to the stiletto underneath. And that we will take our break. So don't go anywhere. We will be back for this little buddy adventure here in just a bit. And uh, we will see you all then. Get some snacks, stretch your appendages, 
and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> 